Bayes uh, approach of seismic response of RC walls with ductile electroworked reinforcement. And this is presented by Jorge. Thank you. E. Egger. Well, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to introduce you a Chilean project. Uh, we have been working on that for four years approximately. And it's titled by an approach of system repose of reinforced concrete walls uh, with ductile electro weather reinforcement. <coughs> well, as my colleague said a few minutes ago, Chile is a seismic country. It's an large and large country uh, located in South America. Between, it's located between the Nazca plate and the South American plate, which means that we have, we have important seismic events. And one of the most important earthquakes that we had a few years ago was the 2010 Chile earthquake, magnitude 8.8. We can observe here that we, we have problems in terms of structural uh, elements, such as reinforced concrete walls. You can observe here uh, lateral instability, problems with buckling in, in the tail, in the, in the tail, in the reinforcement. <clears throat> so considering this background, uh, Chilean companies have been developed uh, new materials in order to avoid this type of problems and especially uh, focus on the utility of these type of materials. Uh, Atma, which is a Chilean company, developed a new uh, steel with similar properties of A630, which is a quality, American quality related to the steel. Uh, and this uh, steel is called A630S which S is from weldable in Spanish, so that uh, ductile electro-welded reinforcement. Uh, according to the previous literature, um, we have to consider that the uh, welded uh, steel uh, doesn't, in general, doesn't have the same uh, ductility as a conventional reinforcement. So that's why this steel is very special, because we can observe here in a few uh, tests that we did uh, in tensile strength, um, compared to um, <clears throat> conventional reinforcement, that they have similar uh, values in terms of mechanical properties, such as the yield stress, the ultimate stress, the ultimate strength, and also the stress rate, which is the, the, the ratio between the ultimate strength, the, the ultimate strength uh, to the yield stress. We can observe that the, in, in the curves that they have uh, similar uh, responses, but they change, they slightly change, uh, depending on the joints. <clears throat> We also tested a few uh, reinforcement bar on the low cycle fatigue uh, in order to see what is the, the response in terms of this type of uh, seismic events. Uh, we can observe here in the, in, in the first two plots, in these two plots, that they have the same buckling length and also the same number of cycles until failure. And also here, with a higher, a greater buckling length, 25 times the diameter, but with similar number of cycles to failure. <clears throat> so the thing is, uh, what, what could happen if we use this type of new material in, 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 in reinforced concrete members? So <clears throat> we built and we construct and built uh, 16 specimens, 16 reinforced concrete walls in order to test it on the system. Level. We can also here the, a few geometries, uh, the geometry of the walls that we tested. Uh, the wall number one is a slender wall in order to capture the flexural behavior. And the rest of the non score balls, but the difference they are related to the detailing of the of each reinforcement of each uh, reinforced concrete wall. Uh, we can observe here that in wall number one and number two it uh, has double curtain, double curtain here of in the panel. And in wall number three and number four we have single curtain, but they are uh, squat balls, and the relationship is tied to width. Uh, higher than three for the flexural walls, <coughs> for sorry for the slender walls. We can also here the reinforcement of walls <coughs> for the different cases, and finally the specimens. Uh, you can see here that we have to transport the, the, the specimens to the lab uh, of the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Chile in order to test it. <coughs> Finally, we use this test protocol. Uh, we can also here the seismic law that we apply it, uh, as a lateral uh, law or lateral displacement at the top of the wall. We use it 
10 uh, LDG sensors in order to measure the displacement. And finally, we tested the, 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 the reinforced concrete walls in order to obtain the experimental response. <clears throat> we can observe here uh, the wall number one. We wanted to analyze the distribution of vertical strains. Uh, we can observe that there is a strain concentration at the bottom of the, the, the wall. Uh, and we can observe we can also observe that the experimental response is based on two types of components, the flexural component and the shear component. We can observe that in the flexural component is the predominant in this type of behavior because this is lender. <coughs> and we have a different behavior for a, for a squat wall, in this case, wall number four. We can observe that the, we wanted to analyze the distribution of horizontal strains in the panel. And we can observe that the failure pattern is a diagonal failure uh, in, the, in, the, in the wall. We can, observe, we can also observe that the flexural and shear component are quite similar. <clears throat> Finally, we are taking the experimental responses of 16 uh, specimens. We can observe here in the first row that we have the, the reinforced concrete walls uh, reinforced with conventional steel. And in the second row, the, the reinforced concrete walls reinforce it with ductile electro welder steel. We can observe that the drift capacity and, and the, 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 the limits of drift and the capacity are quite similar depending on the type of wall. <clears throat> but we also have questions about uh, what happened to the slopes of the, of the, the, the experimental response, the, the, the high stability curves, what happened to the stiffness, what happened to the strain regulation. So we decided to analyze two types of model, two types of hysteretic formulations. Uh, we defined the multilinear model that we can see here. It's composed, it's composed by different uh, linear functions and a classic Bowen model uh, with six parameters. Uh, we also use bias and optimization in order to obtain um, an accurate um, estimation of the parameters related to each for each model. And as the name said, the bias and the optimization is based on Bayes theory, which is composed by the posterior probability density function, the model elements, which is considered as a constant, and the prior distribution, which is considered also constant in the logarithm logarithmic uh, space, and finally the likelihood function, which is considered as, in this case as a Gaussian um, probability distribution. As I say, there are, few there are few constant parameters, and finally the problem of maximum a posteriori is simplified to a maximum likelihood estimation. Finally, we have the objective function that we can observe here, the uh, theta is the parameter vector, for multilinear model we use five parameters, for Goldberg model we use six parameters, and uh, why is the measurement data? Uh, displacement, lateral displacement versus uh, lateral force. And H is the model. <clears throat> For multilinear model, we can observe here that uh, uh, the results are well fitted. Uh, we have the experimental response and also the multilinear model. <clears throat> and we can observe here the, the evolution for each parameter related to this model for each cycle. And we can observe that here we have a few trends. Uh, we have enough time to uh, formulate these trends in terms of mathematic uh, response. But it's really interesting to see the, the behavior. Uh, we, can, we can parameterize this type of uh, behavior. <clears throat> and for the Bowen model, uh, we can also observe that there is a, a, a well fitted uh, response between the model and, and the experimental response. But the evolution for each parameter is, is different. Uh, which we interpreted that uh, <clears throat> this is a classic open model with six parameters and it's not capturing a few behaviors related to the experimental response, such as the pinching or the strain regulation. <clears throat> Finally, well, the experimental results uh, show that there are no difference in the strain capacity, uh, all specimen which are similar loading levels as we can see in the, in the previous slides. And also the serviceability wasn't altered. And in terms of calibration, the calibrated samples show a good agreement with a wide range of quality data. And good agreement is observed between the static parameters, as we saw in the previous uh, slides. And the multilinear model presents less uncertainty than both when more. Well, finally, I would like to thank to my supervisor of Imperial College, uh, Christian Malaga.
He was supervising my my Bayesian methodology. Also, my professors from the University of Chile, Fabian Rojas and Leonardo Mason, they were leading this project for almost four years. And Javier Cabello and Francisco Escobar, they were doing their internships in, in NFA. I was working there and I was in charge of both. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Do we have any questions? Thank you, Jorge, for, for that very nice presentation. Very interesting. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could go back to the slide with the um, experiments or the single bars, please. I think. With experimental results. Uh, sorry, well, you had before bars, experiments of ah, reinforcement. Okay. Yeah, on the reinforcement, sorry, but yeah, read off. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't understand that. So, what, what is the difference in between? We are reject. Oh, okay. So, it's the same. Yeah, this is, yeah. This both, both have the same uh, geometry, the same mapping length, eight times the diameter. And this, this graph uh, is the response without joint. And this one is with joint. You can see here, there is a bar with a joint. Okay. Right? So this is a bar with a joint. Yes. And we are comparing the same geometric uh, input parameters, but without joint. The same here, but the, the back end is higher. Yeah. It's 25 times the diameter. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. I can get that back. Yeah. Um, I actually have a question. Ah, sorry. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, does your work now substantiate the use of that new steel that had been developed, or was it already in use and you were uh, just providing additional evidence of, of its... Uh, okay. the, the project has been finished, yeah? but we did an extension with Imperial College in order to analyze the, the, two, the, two, the two models that I, I presented here in order to analyze the, the evolution of each parameter. In this case, we have five parameters to analyze for each cycle, and in this model, we have six. And we wanted to analyze what happened to, 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 to each, to each um, a parameter for each cycle, or for each drift. Uh, well, it depends on what you want to plot in a, in a graph, what you, want to, what you want to formulate in, a, in this type of analysis. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think you had the graph, a stress strain graph in the very beginning. We had like one Which time. The reinforcement? Yeah, at the very beginning. Or basically like one joint, two joints, without joint. This? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Just yeah. understand, when you go from without joint, one joint, to three joints, it looks like you can basically have less stress and less strain. But when you have two joints, it looks like you can have a greater strain. Jean-Jean, is there any specific factor that you can basically contribute this discrepancy between well, yes. one joint to yes. three joint? As always, the reinforcement has a difference in terms of manufacturing. So you can have this type of uh, variations uh, when you tested this type of uh, materials. Uh, we test like 30 uh, reinforcing bar and we have different variations like this. Uh, I agree, for example, oh, sorry. I agree, for example, that we have difference in terms of activity. But the thing is to show that the joints are affecting the response, rather than having a, an accurate, uh, an accurate bias. That's why I, I mean here average. This is very important because when we want to talk about values on site, we need to handle or, or, or know just one value to, to discuss this type of things with a client, with a worker, or even with colleagues. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, if there are no further questions, we can move to the next presentation. Um, thank you.